Next, let's go ahead and implement the functionality that will allow us to delete a particular task. So what we essentially want to do is we want to be able to click here on this X button and then go ahead and delete a particular task on the database and also remove it here from our list. So let's navigate back to our code editor and here inside of the form.html, let's go ahead and look here for this button that has the class of text red 500, which essentially means that it is this X button that we have here, the SVG for. And here on this button element, let's go ahead and add the following attributes. First of all, type in here hx-delete and the value of this is going to be forward slash tasks. And then let's go ahead and pass in here the ID of the particular task that we are looping through. So let's go ahead and open here our curly braces. And then let's go ahead and pass it here, that item, that ID. Before we continue, if you want to learn more in depth how to build a SAS application from scratch using HTMX and Go and get one-on-one -on -one help when doing it, click the link below to join the HTMX Go SAS Blueprint, a complete A to Z course on how to build and launch a SAS application using HTMX, Go, PostgreSQL and other technologies. I'm still building the course, so if you want to get notified and get free access to exclusive videos before they are released, go to webdevfuel.com forward slash HGSB or click the link in the description below to go ahead and sign up. Next, since we don't want to have this button as the target element when we return empty HTML from our server, let's go ahead and define what we want our target to be. So here we need to go ahead and type hx-target and the value will be the ID of task and then dash our item ID. And finally, let's define our swapping strategy, which will be outer HTML. So let's go ahead and type in here hx-swap and then we want the value of this to be outer HTML. And now let's go ahead and give this a try inside our browser. Let's take a look here at our network tab. And if we go ahead and make here a request, actually let's go ahead and ensure that we refresh the browser, first of all. And now if we go ahead and click here, as you can see, it goes ahead and makes a request here to forward slash tasks forward slash one, which is the ID of this particular task. Then the method is the delete. But since we don't have this method implemented yet inside of our backend, this returns a 404 not found status code. So let's go ahead and implement this right now. Inside our code editor, let's navigate back to handler.go and here let's go ahead and add a new function which we'll call handle delete task. So let's go ahead and type this in here, handle delete task. And the arguments for this one are going to be the exact same one as the other handlers. So let's simply go ahead and copy this and then let's go ahead and paste this in here. And now inside of this function, let's go ahead and say the following. First of all, we want to go ahead and grab our ID. So actually we can simply go ahead and copy this entire code block and simply paste this in here. So let's take a look here at what's happening with the code that we've just copy and pasted. So first of all, we want to go ahead here and try to convert this from a string to an integer. We grab our ID here from the URL param method that we get here from our sheet package. And finally, we handle the error down here. So if there's an error parsing the ID into an integer, we go ahead and log this to the console. So now let's go ahead and implement the code that will allow us to delete a particular task. So let's start by first of all grabbing here our error and then let's go ahead and call the delete task function. And here we need to go ahead and pass two different arguments. First of all, let's type in here r.context because we need to pass a context to this function. And then let's go ahead and pass in here as the second argument, the ID. Now let's go ahead and handle our error. So if the error is different than nil, let's go ahead and print this to the console. So we want to say that there was an error deleting the task. And then let's also go ahead and pass the error in here. And now we want to go ahead and fetch both the total count and also the completed count because we want to go ahead and after deleting a particular task, 
update both of those values inside of the browser. So let's go ahead and grab here our count and also the error. And then let's call here the fetch count function. And then let's go ahead and handle our error down here. So if the error is different than nil, let's go ahead and print this to the console. And let's say that we had an error fetching the count. And finally, let's go ahead and grab our completed count. So let's type in here completed count and then also go ahead and grab the error. And then instead of calling the fetch count function, this time we want to go ahead and call the fetch completed count function. And let's do the exact same thing. We want to go ahead and handle our error. So let's say in here error fetching completed count. And finally, let's go ahead and execute both of the templates. So we want to execute both the total count block and also the completed count block. And we want to go ahead and pass swap OB as true. So it can go ahead and make an out of bound swap. And then the primary HTMX response will be empty. So it will essentially go ahead and delete the target that we specified inside of our button element. So let's type in here temple and then execute template. The first argument is going to be our response writer. And then let's pass in here the name of our block, which is total count. And finally, let's go ahead and pass in here a map with key of strings. And then the values are going to be any. And first, let's pass in here our count. And then also the value of swap OB, which in this case, it is true. And finally, let's simply go ahead and copy this. Let's rename this from total count to completed count. And finally here, the key is going to be count. And then the value in this case is going to be completed count. Now let's go ahead and save this file. And finally, let's go ahead and add this handler to our router. So let's navigate back here to main.go and here type r.delete. And then the first argument is going to be forward slash tasks. And then let's go ahead and pass in here the ID. And the second argument is going to be handle delete task. Now let's move back to our browser. And if we go ahead and refresh and give this a try. So let's go ahead and try to delete a particular task. As you can see, we get here the status code of 200 back. And then our particular task is deleted from the list via htmx and now if we go ahead and refresh as you can see this particular task was removed also from the back end so if we go ahead and refresh the page we don't have that particular task available to us anymore so let's also go ahead and delete all of these tasks down here and as you can see as we delete our tasks also here the completed tasks value and also the total tasks value stays consistent with what's true inside of our backend. Okay, so now we want to go ahead and implement the functionality that will allow us to edit a particular task. So what we want to essentially happen is we want to be able to click here on this pencil and then we want to toggle this part right over here of our task. So it becomes an input that we can go ahead and type something else into and then go ahead and update the title of a particular task. So inside our code editor, let's navigate back to form.html and let's search here for our item title. And here, what we essentially want to do is we want to create an if else statement. And if we pass the value of editing as true into this block, we want to go ahead and render the input. And if that value is false, we simply go ahead and render here our p element. So let's go ahead and type in here if dot editing. Then let's go ahead and pass our else statement. And finally, let's go ahead and end this if else statement. Then let's go ahead and paste in here our form element, which will be here the input that we can use to go ahead and edit our item title. And finally, let's simply go ahead and copy this from here and then paste this in here. Finally, let's go ahead and save this template and let's give this a try in a very simple way. So let's simply go ahead and navigate here back to our index.html and in here, let's simply try to pass in here the value of editing as true and let's save this. And now if we move back to the browser, as you can see, if we go ahead and refresh, 
we now get this input for all of our tasks and that's because we are passing the value here of editing as true. Now let's go ahead and edit this from true to false. So the, the default value essentially will be false and then when we do our initial rendering we only get here our p element and now let's go ahead and implement the functionality that will allow us to go ahead and click on our pencil icon and then go ahead and turn this from a p element into an input. So let's navigate back to our form.html and then let's go ahead and search here for our pencil icon. So as you can see, we have up here our tasks red 500, which means this is our X icon. And that also means that this button down here is our pencil icon. So now let's go ahead and add all of the attributes that we need here to this button. So we can go ahead and toggle that again from a P element into an input that we can use to edit the title of a particular task. So let's start by adding our hx-get attributes. So let's go ahead and type this in here. And then the value is going to be for slash tasks. And then we need to go ahead and pass in here the ID of the particular task. So let's go ahead and type in here item.id. And finally, we want to go ahead and type in here for slash edit. And after doing this, let's go ahead and specify our target. So in this case, the target is also going to be task and then dash. And then finally, let's go ahead and pass in here the ID. Now, the reason we are passing in here as a target our task ID is because we don't want to go ahead and only swap our P element. Instead, we want to go ahead and swap this entire item block and then based on that if else statement, so if it is editing or not editing, it is going to render the correct element, which makes our code a lot easier to manage and also to understand. So with this said, let's finally add in here our swapping strategy. So type in here hx-swap and then let's pass in here the outer HTML. And now let's go ahead and implement the handler that will allow us to toggle the editing state of a particular task. So let's navigate back to the handler.go file and down here, let's go ahead and add a new function which will call handle edit task. And the arguments are going to be both of these ones too. So let's go ahead and copy them and paste them down here. And finally in here, let's go ahead and do the following. First, we want to start by parsing our task ID. So to keep things simple, let's simply go ahead and copy again this from here and paste this down here. Next, let's go ahead and fetch a particular task based on the ID that we get here from our router. So let's type in here task and then let's also go ahead and grab the error. And finally, let's go ahead and fetch a particular task. Let's also go ahead and pass in here the ID as the first and only argument. And then let's go ahead and handle our error. So if the error is different than nil, let's go ahead and print a message to the console. So let's say error fetching task with ID. And then let's go ahead and pass in here our ID and also the error. Then let's ensure that we are returning here this function. And finally, let's go ahead and return the HTML for our task back to the browser with the value of editing as true. So type in here temple and then execute template. Let's go ahead and pass in here our response writer. Then we want to go ahead and call here our item template. And finally here, let's go ahead and pass our map. And here the first key is going to be item. Then let's go ahead and pass in here the value here, the item that we grab from our database and actually the value is going to be task and then let's go ahead and pass in here the value of editing as true. Now let's go ahead and save this file and add this handler to our router. So let's navigate back to our main.go file and in here type r.get then the first argument is going to be the path so let's pass in here forward slash tasks then let's go ahead and grab the id and finally forward slash edit and the second argument is the function that we want to go ahead and call. So let's type in here handle edit task. And finally, let's go ahead and save this file. Now let's go ahead and give this a try. So if we move back to our editor, let's go ahead and refresh here our page. And then let's simply try to click on one of these buttons 
And as you can see, if we go ahead and click on the pencil, this now gives us here an input that we can now go ahead and use to update the title of a particular task. 